What was the most dickish way in which a friend showed you that you're not as close as you thought? Part 1. Kick back and enjoy the ride. If you dig what you see, hit that subscribe button and share the love for Thread Tonic. Account 1. A close friend of mine, whom I have known since our freshman year, was about to marry his girlfriend of almost a decade. I was really happy for them and said that I was looking forward to seeing them exchange rings. He then explained that his and her families were rather large, and it was already getting pretty expensive. He said they had to make ends meet and that I was not invited. He mentioned that they would have loved to have all their friends around, but the ceremony was just for family. They would have a party later to celebrate with everyone else. Truth be told, it did hurt, but I told him that I understood. Yes, marriages are very expensive, and after all, it is their party. A week later, a common friend showed up and asked if I wanted to join in on a wedding present. I declined, saying I would give them something personal, and that I only give presents at parties where I am actually present. He was surprised I was not invited, as many of our mutual friends were. Later, the groom explained that they could not exclude certain friends because they were almost family and had promised long ago to give them roles during the wedding. I let the topic go, but I felt quite hurt when I saw the photos and recognized half of our old clique. From this point on, it only got worse. We used to be co-workers, and he was even my supervisor at one point. Since I moved to another part of the country, he does not answer emails. When I saw him again in February, I had a lovely talk with his wife while he actively avoided me. The usual invite to his birthday party in March was lost in the mail, I guess. The after party never came, by the way. I do not wish him ill and still regard him as a remote friend, given our past. But it is clear that he does not want a closer friendship than that. I do not mind, as there are many people I know who do not want a closer friendship. But I do feel that this was a hurtful move. Account 2. A friend of 12 years called me the night his father committed suicide. I was the only person there that night who was not direct family. I cleaned up the mess left behind by the paramedics and buried his dog that night so the family would not have to experience that as well. I cannot get him to leave World of Warcraft for a single night out of the month and only found out about his recent engagement secondhand. I am not angry at him. I just thought we were closer friends than that. Account 3. I realized we weren't as close as I thought when my friend organized a group outing to a theme park and conveniently forgot to invite me, claiming they thought I wouldn't be interested. Apparently, riding roller coasters and eating cotton candy together isn't their idea of bonding. Guess I'll just enjoy my own company and funnel cake. Account 4. I learned we weren't as close as I thought when my friend asked for my help planning their wedding. Excited to be involved, I spent weeks helping with decorations, organizing seating charts, and offering heartfelt advice. On the big day, I arrived ready to celebrate, only to find myself relegated to menial tasks like folding napkins and directing guests to their seats. Meanwhile, their inner circle of friends delivered heartfelt toasts, danced the night away, and seemed to forget I was even there. It was a stark reminder that our friendship was measured not by genuine connection, but by my utility in their grand affair. Account 5. A really close friend of mine posted a long rant about how miserable she was with her life. Being one of her best friends, I left her a message letting her know that I'm always there if she wants to talk or something. Two days later, she answered with, I would rather gouge my own eyes out with a spoon. Fuck off. I asked her if I had done something to piss her off, and she told me, no. My problems are my own. Just fuck off. I have not spoken to her since. Account 6. I had a best friend who had just gone through a bad breakup and needed someone to move into her apartment to help her with rent. My boyfriend and I moved in, and we all had a blast together for a few months. She and my boyfriend were close, but I never suspected anything. I worked six days a week, and they were both unemployed, so they spent a lot of time together. After a while, it was clear she and my boyfriend had some kind of a falling out because they both started to talk badly about each other when we were alone. It got to the point where we basically had to move out because the vibe in the apartment was pretty sour and I was stuck in the middle. He vehemently denied anything weird went on. They were just friends and then she started to hate him. Soon after we moved out, my boyfriend was diagnosed with lung cancer. 
She was basically the only person other than him that I knew in this city at the time, as I am from the other side of the country. She was my only support, and I called her to let her know what was going on. Her response was that she did not want to deal with it, and she never spoke to me again. TLDR. My ex-best friend may have had an affair with my boyfriend, and I just came to this realization while writing this post. Account 7. I was close to this girl who used to come through the coffee shop where I worked while also working on my multiple undergraduate degrees. I never spent much time with her family, as I was 10 years older than her, and we were just friends. When her dad died suddenly, she asked me to be a pallbearer at his funeral. I was touched, as it was a tremendous honor to be chosen to walk her dad's body to its final resting place. She said I was chosen because I was so important to her. A year or so passed, I graduated and was accepted to the Peace Corps, so I said goodbye. After I got back from the Peace Corps, I reconnected with her. I had problems with internal bleeding since my return and needed surgery. We had been staying in touch via email, and I saw her from time to time at the coffee shop where she worked. I explained my situation in my emails and mentioned that I would need someone to pick me up after surgery and stay with me for 24 hours in case of a post-op infection. I sent her several emails but did not hear back. I got an email from her a day or so before my surgery, asking about my internal bleeding. Instead of helping me, I got a buddy from work to pick me up after surgery. Since he couldn't stay, I spent the night alone in horrible pain, crying and vomiting in the shower. It was one of the loneliest nights of my life. After, she moved to San Francisco. Although I have emailed her a few times, she refuses to reply. I am thinking about her these days because I am bleeding internally again, and this time they found a mass to go with the bleeding. Edit. The internal bleeding is from stones and cysts in my kidneys and a mass in my bladder. The surgery will remove the stones and cysts and biopsy the mass in my bladder. I did not anticipate the number of responses I received, or I would have shared this at the start. It was more about explaining the shame of being unable to find someone to watch over me when I really needed it. Thank you for all your kind replies. Account 8. I had a friend try to take advantage of me because his girlfriend told him to and ended up screwing himself over in the process. I was opening a new restaurant in Florida and brought a friend from up north to help out. He was enthusiastic about everything, worked hard and I thought he was loyal too. But he had some issues. He used to introduce himself by his self-given nickname, Showtime. We were in Florida opening the restaurant. He lived in my house for free and earned a good paycheck with full benefits. Over the first six months, I promoted him from kitchen manager to general manager. He struggled to keep up, but managed to do it. I eventually went back up north for the summer, leaving him in my house for free and letting him drive my new SUV, which he smoked in. About two months later, my father passed away unexpectedly from a rare disease. I decided to sell some of the smaller startup businesses I was involved in to make time to help my family, including this restaurant. I had a buyer, so it should have been a fairly easy process. I closed the restaurant but kept Showtime on for two months with full salary and benefits. About a week in, I had another friend drive down to Florida with a truck to load up some things from the restaurant. He and Showtime then drove it up to me and I flew Showtime back to Florida. He messed up that trip, but that was nothing. Near the end of the two months, I was finalizing the sale. Showtime had just met a new girlfriend who convinced him he was not being treated well by me. He called me and told me that he and his girlfriend had the keys to the restaurant, the combination to the safes, and the alarm codes. If I didn't give him a certain amount of money, they wouldn't return them. I flew down to Florida the next morning, showed up at their apartment, and found out where they were from their landlord. I got them on the phone and explained that if they didn't show up at the restaurant in an hour with my keys and codes, I would get the police involved. Showtime's girlfriend taunted back that the police were already involved. An hour later, she showed up at the restaurant with a sheriff. She got in my face, started screaming, and explained the situation to the officer. The sheriff looked at her confused and then asked me if I would like to have her arrested for attempted extortion. I told the officer I just wanted my keys and codes. The girlfriend handed them over and left, screaming and yelling. I never saw or heard from Showtime again. He lost a friend, a bonus I would have given him, a job recommendation, and his health benefits. He also destroyed my house and left my SUV filthy, both of which I let him use for free for almost a year. Account 9. My family helped my mom's best friend and her family get into Canada. My dad went to embassies, was on the phone almost constantly, until they finally got in. 
They spent the first year living in our home, which wouldn't have been bad if her husband went out to look for a job or maybe even went out to set up his own fucking bank account or do his own paperwork. The wife was a total bitch. My mom's taking teaching courses and doing a job to support the family and this lady can't even make herself tea? She can't even cook one meal? She and her husband stay home all day. They can't help whatsoever. Our house is divided into two parts. The downstairs is finished, and we used to rent it out. We had them living there and lost income generated from there as well. Their kids were supposed to stay downstairs, not go upstairs when my sister and I weren't home, and steal our books and toys. They had their own toys, and we were happy to share, but stealing... Stealing? Their little daughter, while four, beat up my little sister, who was two at the time, for going in her room. I understand that it was a little kid, but the parents didn't care that this happened. I lived with this for a year. The feeling that my home wasn't mine because I'd find their son, around my age, in my closet, going through my clothes. Having to see my parents deal with supporting another four mouths with a lessened cash inflow. But you know what made it better? When my mom finally let her best friend know she had to move out because her husband finally got a good job and my mom finally convinced someone in a community to rent out a home to her and this bitch, this stupid selfish bitch says, I expected more from you. My blood boils every time I think of what they did to us. The way they abused us. This woman became a teacher and calls her colleagues racist for not waving to her in the halls. They don't wave to her because she's a cunt. She took a teaching course that my mom did and accused the prof of being racist because she got a C, my mom got an A, and is the same race. Just to clarify, not only was she an idiot, but she wore the ugliest purple lipstick you have ever seen. They finally left our neighborhood after realizing everyone hated them, and they left their garbage in our backyard. They showed up one day while everyone was out and dumped everything back there. Also, they left mold in both our home and the home they rented. The people who they rented their home from only rented it to them. Because they liked my mom enough to. When these people left, they left the house smelling like piss. I'm not kidding. Visiting their house was the nastiest thing ever. I could, and have, gone on for hours about them. And each time, it makes me angry to know that you could kill yourself working for someone but they'll insult you when they should thank you. TLDR, mom's best friend, stays in our home for a year with her lazy-ass husband and cunts of kids. Destroys our home. Expected my mom to do more for her. Account 10. Known some guys for about three years. Then I get invited to a party of one of the guy's girlfriends. I don't know her well, but I accept, as I hadn't been invited to any previously. The party was me and my friends and some girls. I go to sit down with a circle of kids and my friends start to act like they don't know me and ask me to leave. Account 11. High school. Had been hanging out with some friends all year. And on finals week, we would head for someone's house for lunch every day as soon as everyone was done with morning exams. Second day of finals, we're walking up the hill towards the cars when one of my friends turns to me and says, Dude, I gotta talk to you. We don't want you to come with us other guy is really nerdy and annoying and he irritates everyone since he goes wherever you go we don't want you to come along hope you understand sorry and off they went to lunch leaving me standing open-mouthed in the parking lot that's one of those moments my subconscious likes to dredge up when i'm sitting at a red light feeling good about myself a real ego smasher account 12 I was at a party with a group of friends that I had known for about six or so years. It was an outdoor party, and I was off talking with a guy I know on the far side of the large backyard we were in. Unbeknownst to me, my boyfriend at the time had been chugging a large bottle of wine, got a bit too drunk, and expressed some sentiment of jealousy about me talking to my guy friend in the vicinity of two other guys in the group of friends. So there I am. Hanging out, having a jolly carefree time, when I hear someone yell from across the field, I'm hanging out in, hey, whatcha doing? To which I playfully reply, hunting rabbits. Okay. After all, up until this point, we had all been having a goofy fun time yelling all kinds of silly stuff. Suddenly I see these two guys walking really fast through the field towards me and my buddy. Keep in mind, these are two people that I had thought to be friends of mine and had considered them so for many years at this point. When they get about halfway across the field, I hear them start yelling, get the fuck off my property. 
I thought they were joking around until they get closer and start screaming in both our faces that we need to get the fuck off their property right now. I am beyond bewildered and confused and start trying to talk to them to figure out what was going on or why they were inexplicably angry. One of the dudes is immediately trying to kick the ass of the guy I am with, who happened to be extremely skinny and could have been easily pounded into oblivion by this fellow. Still without having any clue what is going on, I find myself in the position of protecting my friend from getting beat to hell by physically standing between this guy and him screaming to know what the hell was going on and why they were doing this. I am a rather petite female. They continue to scream some of the most hateful words I have ever heard from someone in my face and then take me by the arm and physically pull me across the field. The field had a small barbed wire fence in the middle that you have to step over to get to the other side. They pulled me through the barbed wire fence, creating several deep gouges up to 14 inches long on my exposed legs. I was wearing shorts. They physically pushed me onto the ground in their driveway and with a final get the fuck out, walked away back to the party. I was left standing there crying, bleeding, shaking and beyond confused as to why or what exactly just happened. All I found out later was that my drunk boyfriend made a slight comment about being jealous of the guy I was talking to. And apparently the two were also drunk and inexplicably flipped their lids. Needless to say, I never set foot anywhere near those psychotic assholes again. Edit. One of the guys I saw about a year later, and he actually came up to me at a bar, tried to buy me a shot, and said something along the lines of, I was really drunk. Shit happens. You understand, right? No. I think not. I turned down his gesture, did not say a word, and left. Account 13. I quit drinking. Now people I considered family two years ago are completely gone from my life. Some of these were people I had known for more than seven years and some for twice that. What's funny was most of them had suggested through the years that I should get some help. Your drinking pals don't really want you to quit. Not ever. Something I did learn, though. If you work regularly, pay your bills, save and spend wisely, you don't have to worry about friends. Friends will happen. Account 14. I'd been best friends with this girl for about 13 years. I took a year off from college to study in Israel. Her 21st birthday was coming up, and she would send me Facebook messages about how I should come to her birthday, and it would not be fun unless I was there. I bought a plane ticket and told my friend who was planning the party that I was going to be there and it should be a surprise. I was on a plane for 14 hours, then had to drive another six so I could be at this party for my best friend. I saw her for about an hour before she had to take care of school stuff. She left with her BF and 15 other people to go to a house party. I got a message from her three weeks later asking when I was going back. I was only in town five days. I have not talked to her since. Account 15. Girl I was besties with for nearly 10 years. I kind of knew that she was one of those emotionally needy types, but just didn't really think it would end up aimed at me, I guess. She got laid off from her job around the same time my husband's annual checkup indicated possible prostate cancer. I posted on my journal about my worries and fears for him. Friend replies to my post with a long public comment tearing me several new assholes for being so selfish and self-absorbed and how I only talk about me on my journal and I'm not being there for her when she's going through the hell of being laid off. I lose my shit and stop speaking to her. Husband turns out not to have cancer. About a year later, I get an email from her confessing that she realizes how insensitive and inappropriate her reaction was. We cautiously take up being friendly with one another again. A few months down the road, her brother-in-law's GF is pregnant, and they make a painful decision to give the baby up for adoption for various family reasons. She posts on her own journal boasting about how she tore the GF several new assholes because her and her husband have been trying to get pregnant for a few months. And the GF was so selfish and self-absorbed that she made these arrangements for her child's adoption without first consulting friend and friend's husband to see if they'd like to adopt the child themselves. After a few more incidents like this, I just kind of realized this woman was not the person I thought she was, and I distanced myself. When she realized what was going on, she lambasted me verbally and disconnected from the friendship. Thank God. 